Good evening. Good evening. And welcome to St. Peter's Church. Please stand and join in our opening song, They'll Know We Are Christians, on page 584. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest Amen. and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Almighty, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merit and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience bereads and to give what prayers does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone, so I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each one of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he for a little while was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. 
The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if, all, if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into a life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into that unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into a life crippled them with two feet to be thrown. Oh. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> hey, I was on a roll. Got it. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Lord, to you, Lord. The Pharisees approach Jesus and ask, is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her, but if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And the people were bringing children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. 
Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, God is good. And all the time, that is nature. Wow. I think it's good. At least the deacon re reminded us about our, you know, our last Sunday reading. You know, probably it's, it's good. We need again to refresh our minds and, uh, and, and, and remember, you know. <laughs> so uh, today, I have a joke for you. Are you ready? Ha-ha. <laughs> A Sunday school teacher was trying to demonstrate the difference between right and wrong. All right, children, let us take an example. She said, if I were to go into a man's pocket and take his wallet with all his money, what will I be? That's the question. But a little child behind at the back answer, you'll be his wife. Who? <laughs> but I have another question. You know, when I was just thinking about this, at the sacristy, I asked Deacon Jeff, and Deacon Jeff reminded me because I am not married. I don't have any experience. And Deacon Jeff reminded me that if you want to last long in your marriage, always listen to what your wife says. They are always ra right. I don't know. You guys, you know better. My brothers and sisters, liking is not loving. Liking is not loving. You know, I got chance when I was in seminary and I feasted monastery, the Meredinkin monastery, and there was this old monk. And I asked him, like, hey, Father, do you like living with your brothers here? Do you love or like being a monk? And he looked at me and he said the same words. Paul, there's a difference between liking and loving. Brothers and sisters, and I think those who have celebrated 50 years of adversary in their marriage, they can say more. You can just flash back the time especially the marriage couples. What have you seen? The other. There's something that you like in the other. Probably you like a good smile, looking good eyes, you know, good appearance. Probably some people, they like the wealth, you know. But my brothers and sisters, Relationship first begin with liking. Something might attract you to like the other. All those qualities, all those attractions that you have towards the each other. But those are just the things which appeals the eye. Relationship goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. And on this 27th Sunday, our readings invite us to reflect about the importance of marriage and matrimonial relationship as a covenant, not a contract. It is a covenant. 
a total commitment, self to the other. It's not a contract. It's not a time. Like when it's precious a time, it's over. It is a total commitment. And the bond of love that marriage creates between man and woman, a bond that God intends to be permanent. Again, it is not a contract. It is not something temporarily. It is a union of two, a woman and a man. And the celebration of the sacrament of matrimony hearkens back to the first marriage in the beginning of creation story, which highlights the goodness of God in the union of man and woman. For couples, your love for each other should be fruitful. Your love for each other should be serving each other in your marriage, caring for the children God has given you and God will give you. Your, your marriage or your love for each other is to be more fruitful. For couples, your love should be a witness in your daily life, a life of sacrifice, a life of total commitment, a life of mutual giving to each other, a life of fruitfulness and total commitment to one another. In our gospel today, we have heard the Pharisees who are trying to set a trap for Jesus, asking whether it is lawful for a husband to divorce his wife. But Jesus used the occasion to declare that the bond of marriage comes from God and that it's permanent and indissoluble. What God has joined together, man must not separate. Christ gives us precisely the teaching on marriage and divorce, the defining origin of marriage, the sacredness of the family life, and the indissolubility of marriage. And we see Jesus explain about Mosaic law. Jesus explained that Moses' permission for divorce was because of the hardness of the Jewish men's hearts, that Moses allowed such consideration by denying man's right to divorce. Jesus placed the husband and wife on an equal footing in marriage, and he teaches that no mosaic regulation dealing on temporal situation can alter the permanency and unity of marriage. Jesus, clearly teaching on divorce, remind us that his doctrine goes beyond the original intention of God. Citing the book of Genesis, we have heard today, Jesus remind us that God made male and female, and commanded them, the two shall become one. He ran, draw the conclusion of this, that they're no longer two, but one flesh. Partners with equal rights and declares that no man is allowed to separate what God has joined together. But my brothers and sisters, unfortunately, divorce is happening in our world. Divorce is really very high compared to earlier times. You know, when I was preparing for this homily, I just tried to Google and see the rate of divorce in the United States of America. And they say that for the first marriage, they are 40 to 50 percent divorce. For the second marriages, they are 60 to 67 divorce. 
And the third marriage, 73% divorce. I was asking myself, why divorce is happening? Who is to blame? Before marriage, are we really questioning the credibility of relationship? Do couples know each other well? Do couples complement each other? Are there some maturity enough for the two couples to say, yes, we are ready. We are ready to commit our life to one another. Brothers and sisters, there is no marriage without challenges. It's not full of roses, but I know it can be overcome. There are many, many couples who have celebrated 70 years anniversary of their own marriages. It's not that they were so super, super good. They had their own challenges. How did they overcome their challenges? Probably forgiving each other, being patient with one another, seeking guidance and counseling from the elders, trying to see and listen to the examples of others. I'd like, like just to mention some few, like lack of maturity on the part of the intended couples. By maturity, I mean, like, if one is more spiritually mature, physically mature, socially mature, psychologically mature, really to discern, to enter into this sacred union, it is something very important to realize that marriage relationship is quite different from a boy and girl friend relationship. It is very important to see that marriage take more, something more seriously. Important to know that today the increase of divorce rate is due to little attachment to some commodities or some articles instead of sacramental and the sacred institution. And you know, these small things can really bound to fall apart. Brothers and sisters, I would like again to remind you, liking is not loving. Every relationship begins with liking. Good smile, good appearance, good figures, good looking, eyes, respect. All these things are appealing to our eyes. But the relationship goes beyond that. We are called to grow from liking to loving. Today, as we come together, let us pray for all married couples that through the holy matrimony, they may come closer to God and to one another in love, union, and faithfulness. May God also pray for all those families going through difficulties in their marriages and divorce. May God give them strength and grace and wisdom to move forward and find peace in their hearts and they strengthen their families in faith. May God bless you. I believe, God Almighty, make all heaven and earth.
Let us present now a petition, the petition of the church and the whole world to our Heavenly Father. For the church, may the Lord grant wisdom to all who shepherd her so they may lead with care and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples, May they be given the grace to manifest God's faithful love to those around them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may we be given the strength and the courage we need to live as faithful disciples of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those devastated by Hurricane Helene, may they find hope in God's love and may God's grace sustain them in the work of recovery and rebuilding. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the couple who was married in our church this weekend, Kendall and Autumn Valu, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, including Larry Watman, who passed away this past week, that they may know the glory and the splendor of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our special intentions, especially for the intention of this Mass, Father Mike Graw, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, give you thanks for the gift of this day. We give you thanks for the marriage couples. We ask you to listen to the prayers we offer you today. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by commands, and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate the dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, from out of compassion for the weariness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life to eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have greatly right you give a praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly employ you by the same spirit graciously make holy this gift we have brought you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for on the night he was betrayed he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the misery of faith. For Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward for his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your leg, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession your presence will rely upon failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Thomas John our Bishop, the order of bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at the passing from this life. Give God admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him and with the money in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed.
We have a few announcements for this evening. The Social Concerns Committee is collecting baby items this weekend for the first Sunday collection for Ladies of Charity. Please join us after Mass for the book fair in the cafeteria. And the Boy Scouts will be selling wreaths after Mass. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I give you the final blessing, today we have special blessing for our golfers. So first of all, you congratulate them, and I would like to invite them to come in front here for the blessing. Welcome. Congratulations. Okay. Strong and faithful God, as we come together for the contest, we ask you to bless these golfers from our parish. Keep them safe from injury and harm. Instill in them respect for each other and renew them for their perseverance. Lead us all to the reward of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. Congratulations. The Archangel, defend us in battle. <laughs> Prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrash down hell the sudden, and all 